Hey, what's going on, guys? DK back at you with another video here to break down the three game WNBA slate. Uh, I was open up my phone today, saw 20K to first. I'm like, you know what? Let me get a video up for you guys. Um, but yeah, if this is your first time watching over content for Dave Fantasy Sports, um, NBA, WNBA, NFL, also for player prop sites like Parlay Play, which they are the sponsor of today's video. Parlay Play do offer a WNBA props. All the different sports they offer are up here. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to give it a try, you can use the link down below for a $100 deposit match bonus space. If you deposit $100, you get a free $100 to play with on the site. Um, but yeah, how it works is you're building out slips of player props um, and you can mix and match sports. They will offer um, some payout boost specials, uh, a lot of different uh, fun things that that parlay play is uh, adding to the platform. So would highly recommend it. And if you guys do click the link and deposit, it does really help support the channel. So greatly appreciate that. Um, if you're looking for more content, you can always check out my Patreon linked in the description. All right, so let's recap uh, last slate, and then we can get into the video. So last slate, uh, man, still pretty tilted about it, to be honest. Um, basically had the nuts. I was going, uh, the plan was always to go very heavy in this Minnesota-Las Vegas game. Um, I hit on Lee Yuri as a low on value play, absolutely smashed. Uh, but Jackie Young... 13 fantasy points i was i was tilted about this if she just had a normal game guys i'm in i'm in cancun i'm retired i'm, I'm able to retire i'm a millionaire I'm, I'm already planning the retirement if jack young just has a normal game but no 13 fancy points my big stand there um was courtney williams um i thought that the price had come down to a point where um, in an up-tempo matchup, I was more than willing to take that risk. Plus, I knew people would be hesitant because the minutes were a little bit down on her recently, and she absolutely smashed. So, Courtney Williams, Lee Yori were the big reason why I still cash, but, man, I would have had a huge night if Jackie could just had a normal game. All right, let's talk about this site. So, we'll start off with Atlanta and Indiana. So, on the Atlanta side, um, we know Atlanta is you know running a pretty balanced attack. You got Ryan Howard at the top at 10K. Uh, I think it's fine for tournaments. This is a really good matchup against Indiana. You know I do like uh, targeting the Indiana Fever. They're one of the worst defenses in the WNBA. Howard should consistently play low 30s minutes. Um, it's just that like she's not really a cash game play just because the floor is pretty low. Floor is pretty low on, on all of the Atlanta Dream just because uh, again that kind of balance attack. Um, but yeah, I think Howard's still fine for tournaments. Tina Charles at 9.2. I would say probably the easiest to get to of like the top uh, spend ups here for Atlanta. Uh, in a competitive game, she's consistently playing around 30 minutes, assuming no foul trouble. Decent rebounder. Um, you know, good point per minute player. So, yeah, I think Tina Charles is a pretty solid value there. Alicia Gray, the price has dropped to a point where I think she's playable, right? She has not really played well this season. Last season, though, there was a lot of games Alicia Gray had pop off. Like, we've only seen one 40 fancy point game from her this season, but we know it is in the range of outcomes. Again, she's playing similar minutes to Howard, low 30s. So, uh, at an 8.1K price point, another viable tournament play. Uh, Cheyenne Parker, uh, again, only 18 minutes, was on pace to play a little bit more. It, it's, it's the minutes, that's the concern, right? She's probably going to play somewhere around low 20s minutes. In this matchup at this price point, though, I do think she's fine, though. Um, I know maybe that four fancy point game will scare some people off, but um, yeah, I, I think because because she's at a 7.2K price point, that does make her in play, even with that, you know, um, even the low minutes. Um, talk through the rest of Atlanta. Again, they run a pretty deep rotation. Ariel Powers is 5.8. She's consistently playing, you know, close to 20 minutes a night. Good point per minute player. I think a solid value there. Pretty safe. Haley Jones has been starting. Again, the minutes are just not, not amazing on her. And she's not a great point per minute player. So I think I'd rather get to Powers just for a little bit more. Uh, Nas Hillman, I think, is still a decent value play. Uh, 13 minutes. She's going to play low to mid-teens minutes um, at a 4.2K price point. If you're going that Stars and Scrubs type build, uh, I think she's a fine punt play. Dangerfield as well, right? She's not a great point per minute player, but 24 and 22 minutes over the last couple games. Both Dangerfield and Hillman, I think, are viable if you're going that route. Nia Coffey at 3.8. Did play 13 minutes. Get, got extend, though, because of the blowout. Um, before that, though, four and nine minutes. So I think I'm just a little bit more confident with the minutes there for Hillman and Dangerfield. All right, let's talk about Indiana. So um, this is a game that should stay competitive here. Let's take a look. What's the spread right now in this game? Um, let's go to game lines. So it is, yeah, three-point spread, um, 165 over under. Yeah, so game should stay competitive. Not a lot of blowout risk here. And uh, the thing that I like about the Fever, again, they, play, uh, they don't play great defense, uh, but they're also running a very tight rotation right now. 
So um, I do like this team a, a good amount here. I like the upside of the top three here. Caitlin Clark at 9.8. We've seen the ups and downs from her uh, in her rookie year, but the ceiling's there, right? And she's playing huge mitts in competitive game. I know Dallas in foul trouble only played 22 mitts last time out against Connecticut. Uh, but the Sun are one of the best defensive teams in the WNBA, so I don't put too much emphasis into that. So I like the ceiling quite a bit here in Caitlin Clark. Aaliyah Boston is 8.9. Alyssa Smith is 8.2. Boston had the better game last time out, played 33 minutes. Um, I like the ceiling still a little bit more, though, than Melissa Smith. I know she struggled the last couple of games, one of six shooting, four of nine. Um, but I think if she plays decent, like, she has the upside to play 30-plus minutes. Um, so uh, a, a decreasing price point, I like the upside here on Melissa Smith. Kelsey Mitchell, 6.9K. Last one that is consistently seeing, you know, 30-ish minutes or so. Pretty score independent, but um, she knocked down a shot. She does have a ceiling. Um, at this price point, I think she is another uh, solid point per dollar play. Nothing else I feel really confident in here for the Fever. Christy Wallace, minutes been a little bit up and down. Um, you know, a fair value play, probably play somewhere in the neighborhood of like low to mid 20s minutes. Wheeler's going to come off the bench and probably play somewhere around 15 minutes on average. Um, viable. Samuelson uh, is kind of that backup big. 20, 18, and 24 minutes over the last three games. Not bad for, for some of that is 4.4K. Um, so I think she's a decent value play. Lexi Hull got dusted off last game, played 20 minutes, but before that, I uh, was out of the rotation. So um, I think she played well enough to earn some rotation minutes in this game, which makes her, again, playable in GPPs. All right, Seattle and Dallas. I would say this is probably my favorite game to target. Um, you know, Dallas plays really fast. Both teams run pretty tight rotation. Seattle, as we've talked about in every video so far, the offense is running through those top four, and that's basically it. Jewel Lloyd's at the top of 10.5K. Um, really like her upside. Again, if she's if she has an efficient scoring night, she can go for 45 to 50. Um, we, you know, we saw one really big pop-off game from her. We she went for 61 there against the Fever. So like, like her upside in GPPs. The two bigs, you got Nika at 10.3. And Ezzy at 10.1. Um, I think I do prefer Ezzy point per dollar to Naka for a little bit cheaper. Um, also, again, we've talked about this. The blocks and steals, the peripheral stats have been insane for, for Ezzy. So I think I slightly prefer to Naka. Not saying you can't play Naka, but I think I'd rather get to Ezzy at a similar price point. And then Skyward Diggins Smith, 9.4K. Been pretty consistent, you know, playing low 30s mitts in competitive games. She's their primary ball handler. Um, so the peripheral stats are there. Um, pretty solid play, again, in an up-tempo matchup. And then the rest of this team, again, it's nothing nothing you're going to feel great about. Jordan Horston minutes, you know, have ticked up a little bit of late. She probably plays on average high teens minutes. Um, I think she's playable. Same with Victoria Vivian's um, minutes, you know, high teens to low 20s. So I think those two are my favorite kind of punt plays here on Seattle. Sammy Whitcomb, a 4-7, another rotation player. But I would rather get to Horston or Vivian's at a similar price point. Let's right, talk through Dallas. Once again, I would say I know I've had a broken record in these videos, but I think Dallas is my favorite team to target. It's just because how tight of a rotation they're running, they're playing. So they had a double overtime game last time out. And like, look at this. Arike played all 50 minutes. Billings played all but three minutes in a double overtime game. Maddie played all but two minutes in a double overtime game. McCowan played 36 of the 50 minutes, right? So it's like they're just they're giving their main players insane run. Um, Arike's price is ticking up a little bit, but I still like her quite a bit. She's just dominating the usage. Um, obviously was there, had the peripheral stats last time out, tennis, ten assists and seven rebounds. So, um, I do like the ceiling on her quite a bit. I think she's basically going to play the entire game. Um, if she does sit, she'll sit for like a minute or two. So like the ceiling on her quite a bit. Um, and then the bigs, I think are all good point per hour plays here. Billings, McCowan and Maddie Billings at 8.7 K. Um, yeah, pretty high floor. Again, playing massive minutes. Um, 8.7K reasonable price point. McCown probably is the one with the lowest uh, floor just because the minutes are not as secure for her. Whereas with Billings and Maddie, they're literally playing those two like the entire game. But McCown is a really good point per minute player. Um, and if she avoids foul trouble, like she can play 30 plus minutes. So I like your upside there in tournaments. And then Maddie at 7.9K, I think she's a pretty safe play. Obviously outlier, bad game. 48 minutes, 16 fancy points. Um, you're going to expect a little bit more from her if she plays 48 minutes again. So maybe that that game will scare some people off. But I still think she's one of the better point product plays here in the mid range. So yeah, lots like for Dallas. Who's on a 6.7K, um, 33 minutes last time out. Again, not a great point per minute player, but consistently playing, you know, around 30 minutes or so. 
Um, so I think she's a decent value play. Kalani Brown is the backup center. She'll, she, she will back up McCowan. She's basically going to play whatever uh, McCowan does not play. So McCowan gets in some foul trouble. Kalani Brown will get extended. And Kalani Brown is a good point per minute player. So I'm always going to mention her for tournaments because... If you get a game where she sees extended minutes like she did here early on, 19 minutes, 18 minutes here, like she can go for 20 plus fancy points. So um, interesting tournament play there. Not interested in Sora's. Uh, last person to mention here is JC Sheldon. Played 17 minutes. Had kind of been close to out of the rotation, but she played decent. So if you want to take a dart throw on her and hope she sees similar run, um, I don't think it's the worst idea in a large field tournament. Okay, last game here, we got Vegas and we got Phoenix. So the big news, obviously, is Chelsea Gray is questionable. Um, She's been out for a while. Um, originally, I saw she was going to return like right around Olympic break. Um, but then now she's questionable. My guess is she doesn't play in this game, but we'll keep a close eye on it. Yeah, they said doing well and confirmed she will return action before the Olympic break, which was in mid-July. So I'm like, oh, you know, Chelsea Gray's going to be back like, you know, early July. And then we get the news that she's questionable. So I'm like, my lean is right now she doesn't play, but... That would definitely uh, switch, change some things up here for Vegas if she does. Basically, if Chelsea Gray plays, number one, she's going to be on a limit for sure. She's not going to play normal minutes. So um, we would have to see. Hopefully, we would get like clarity in what that limit is. My guess is probably around 20 minutes if she plays. Um, but if she does play, obviously, it's a downgrade to Jack Young, Kelsey Plum. Jack Young's not going to do as much of the ball handling because Chelsea Gray is their true point guard, right? Jack Young's been the point guard so far this season. But when Chelsea Gray's on the court, she is their point guard. Um, and then it would be pretty hard to get to the value plays. Like Tiffany Hayes will lose minutes. Kate Martin will lose minutes. Clark and Stokes have already been kind of tough to get to. So they would be basically out of play if Chelsea Gray does end up giving it a go. Um, but yeah, Asia Wilson, I don't think Chelsea Gray playing really affects her much. Um, in a competitive game, she's going to play mid-30s minutes. She's the best player right now in the WNBA. She's been absolutely smashing. It's a great matchup. So, <laughs> yeah, not a ton else to say here about Asia. She's a great play if you can afford her. Um, Plum and Young, I think, again, are viable in tournaments if Chelsea Young, if Chelsea Gray is out. But if Chelsea Gray is in, I'm not going to get there. If Gray's out, I think Young is a little bit easier to get to than um, Plum. Young, you know, back-to-back -back bad games, but she's been dealing with that illness. Um, they said even in the last game, she was still not 100%. I think with a couple days off, I would assume she is basically 100% now. So um, if there is no Chelsea Gray, I think Jackie Young, I would prefer to Kelsey Plum. Um, and then, yeah, if Gray's out, like Tiffany Hayes, Kate Martin are playable, but the price points have risen on both. Well, I guess the price point dropped at Kate Martin, but um, they would be playable if Gray's out. Clark Stokes, kind of tough to get to, more out there for defense. And then finally, Phoenix. So Phoenix was in a double overtime game as well. So, got to take that into consideration. Clea Copper is at 9.6. Um, she's a pretty similar play to, like, what Ryan Howard is. Um, we've seen the floor. We've also seen the ceiling. Um, the shot attempts are decent. The usage is solid on Clea Copper. So, um, Vegas does play fast as well. I think she's definitely in play here for GPPs. Brittany Griner, I expect to get a good amount of ownership because the last game, 46 fans points in 39 minutes. Now, again, double overtime. So, she's played 29 minutes in regulation. I think you're going to get high 20s to maybe 30 minutes is probably the max here for Griner. Um, if she avoids foul trouble at 9K, I think she is a decent point per dollar play. Not, Natasha Cloud is 8.5. Um, again, she's their point guard. Um, you know, uh, the usage has dropped a bit on her with Brittany Griner back. Shot attempts haven't really been there. Uh, but the price point has dropped as well. So um, because she's the, the because the price has dropped and because this is an up-tempo game, because the minutes are still consistent for Cloud, I think she's a relatively safe play there. We saw the huge pop-up game from DT. She played 29 minutes in regulation, 39 in double overtime. I think, like, if you're comparing these two guards, uh, Cloud is the much safer play. But we've seen a couple pop-up games from Trossi. If you want to you know, take a shot on her for tournaments. Max out of play for me with, with Griner back. She's not playing enough minutes. Cunningham at 6.3K. Not completely out of play. But, um, again, you do have uh, Rebecca Allen back. And uh, that's cut into Sophie Cunningham's minutes. So, Allen is 5.6. Cunningham is 6.3. I think I do. I think Allen is the better point per hour play. Uh, but I expect Allen to get more ownership than Sophie Cunningham. And that's really it. Sug Sutton's been a relatively popular value for a while, but um, the mids have ticked down on her with um, Rebecca Allen and Griner back. So don't think you can go there. Um, all right, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for the video. As always, if you do enjoy, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you all in the next video.